Hey guys, welcome to a, another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be, again, BSL Season 12 Hasu League. Losers match game two between Zamu and Fisheye. Fisheye starting the upper right hand corner as the blue Protoss. Upper left hand corner, we have Zamu. This is on Polypoid. So I'm assuming we're going to, honestly, most of, so obviously, game one going to Fisheye with just constant harassment on Zamu, not letting his economy get up and rolling. But honestly, in most of the matches I've seen thus far, I feel like I'm saying honestly all over the place here. It feels like Zamu's been trying to win games on small economies and overwhelming units. And Polypoid, I don't feel like it's the map that really favors that sort of style. Usually this is a map where, yeah, you see, because it's a four-player map, you see more baseline strong economic play. Fisheye placing that pylon to perhaps, we'll see if he sets up gateway first or ops for forge first. On this map. It's kind of gone back and forth from a lot of Protoss players these days. Looks like we might see... A, are we going to see a pool opener here from Zamu? I'm not seeing an Overlord. Is he going... Okay, yeah, going pool, but a little bit late on that pool. Off the 9 pool. Having a little trouble getting it, down, uh, getting it down in his drone line, which does not help with that opener. So he is relying on Zerglings to do the scouting, also grabbing an Extractor. Ooh, doing extract Cancellation Trick. I take it back. By the way, I have heard that that is not economically efficient these days. It's better just to straight build the drones, go from there. Overlord producing alongside. So this is, yeah. And we do see a forge comparatively, which is going to be necessary. Second probe scout being sent out, which I think is wise. After fish, I seeing that five pool game one. Just to know what Zamu's up to. And this is actually going to be very beneficial for him. He's going to end up with a sizable economic lead over his opponent. If he gets down that cannon in time, which he should, it's going to be right there to see the pool and all the Zerglings being produced. That probe needs to get down there and build the cannon, though. A cannon and a gateway blocking that front door and a couple probes off the line is sufficient. Actually going to plop two cannons down instead. Actually, I think he might want to cancel that second cannon and place it in a different location because I think that might block the Nexus. We'll have to see. This is where my experience of play is and the pixel location is not always the best. Probe very quickly wiped out. And Zamu following this up with a, ne a hatchery at his natural expansion. If this does in fact blockade, then Fisheye might end up in a situation where he's overall economically behind. Otherwise, keep in mind, Zamu doesn't know where his opponent's base is. Another probe going to be able to wander up also to get a scout. Extractor being plopped down. So it looks like there is going to be a push to tech. And actually, so first struggling getting taken out. Okay, the Nexus does in fact fit. Good to know. That's kind of a nice defensive ring as well for those Zerglings not being able to kind of sneak into that back line. And so should be able to plop a gateway. And then as soon as there's a unit, unit up, should be able to clog things. Otherwise, Fisheye scouting up into the base is going to be able to see three drones on gas, which suggests, honestly, two hatch play. Two hatch Muta or perhaps two hatch. Every once in a while, you'll see two hatch Lurker to follow this up. But again, you can see Zamu just sitting on the 11 drone count, playing it a little bit smaller, trying to take care of this probe. The probe doing a great job of staying alive and just outmaneuvering these Zerglings, just going back and forth. Layer now upgrading before the second hatchery is even up. Suzamu, so yeah, really pushing low economy uh, play. And honestly, I don't think Fisheye is going to fall for it. Already has a pylon at his main, assimilator warping in, cybernetic score. If he can get. I like the placement of this cannon now, because it can cover the line to help deal with Mutalisks. As long as he gets a cannon near his natural looks, or at his main, in the probe line, and gets some Corsairs up in the air, he should be safe, and that'll put him in a great position in the mid-game. Zamu currently supply capping himself a little bit. On delay, that Overlord just spawning now is getting Zergling speed to follow this up, so I think he's just going to go for, I don't know, a Muta Ling Bust? On the front door. We'll have to see. Another probe scout making. Uh, this is the same probe? No, I don't. It can't be the same probe, right? Another probe wandering up. Uh, maybe it's the same probe with just four health. Pushing in, sees the lair. So great timing. But you can see additional zerglings being produced to follow this up. That might provoke a third cannon from Zamu. He is building his out there on the front, getting a second assimilator up. So going heavier tech himself. That Stargate on the way. In the midst of this, Zamu kind of backing off that tactic. He he does have the Spire building. 
But nine o'clock base, he's got a hatchery that's been scouted out by this zealot. Zealot pushing a drone off that line. The zerglings should be able to get basically a free kill on that zealot. Another zealot towards the front. But Zamu is, I don't know. We'll see how this turns around. Level and weapons being upgraded. So Fisheye declaring that he's going to take air control. Initial Corsair being produced and should be able to repair, first of all, the, the faster tech, but love this. Zealot getting into that gap already has two Zergling kills. A little bit of smaller surface area so that he's not getting completely surrounded and evening things out a little bit with the Zergling kills. But now Zamu kind of doing half and half. He's pumping drones right as his Spire is going to be finished, which is going to reduce the amount of Mutalisks he'd be able to put into the air at this stage. He's going to have to settle on basically getting a Scourge, perhaps, to deal with this initial Corsair. The Corsair is sailing across the map. The timing of it might be unfortunate for him. Fourth hatchery now in the main. Because honestly, once this Spire finishes, he might end up sailing in just as a handful of Scourge are being produced. We will see. Yeah, Scourge being produced, that's, he'll have to back off and might not get an Overlord kill as a result of this. So trying to play map control from there. Level 1 weapons on the way. Additional Corsair are being built, and there is a cannon, a preventatory cannon, kind of a manor cannon. Just to respect that early, early air threat. So it looks like we're going to have a Zealot leg speed push. It's going to be a bit... Zealot Light, because we only have two. It looks like you see these Scourge trying to chase down that Corsair. Should be able to make it back to the cannon. Is Zamu going to rescue these Scourge? Or is he going to use them to scout? It's kind of the follow-up. Usually, with the these sort of Zealot timings, even with Corsair overhead, you'll have three gateways to push out of. It looks like Fisheye actually supply capped himself a little bit. Now getting a Templar Archives, interestingly enough. So he's actually going to go into kind of a modified late Bisu build style thing. Does have a significant Corsair count up in the air, just in case there was a... And I'm waiting for these to start moving out. Zamu sees it. He's plopping down all sorts of additional hatcheries, sunken colonies, SimCitying up his 9 o'clock, and now starting to move back towards a stronger economic base. Has his Hydral Sten on the front, blockading that. <clears throat> and Fisheye ahead in the overall supply count. I do worry about his odds, because he's kind of not... I don't see him hitting any sort of timing, and Zamu is kind of free in the meantime to just drone up as long as he keeps eyes on everything. Zealots wandering out. That's just four Zealots, though, across the field. The Corsair is making their way across as well. It looks like one of them ate some damage from some sort of Scourge. Overlord Speed is being upgraded, and some a handful of Hydros being built at each location, so Zamu now transferring into more of a defensive Zerg style, shelling things up. Only a single creep colony, but there are a handful of Zerglings and other things to push this army back. The Corsair is looking for overlords and finding nothing. Also, Zergling on patrol at the 12 o'clock location, just in case Fisheye was going to go ahead and try to sneak a third. So here's the thing. DT out in the field to provide some map control as well. More gateways being plopped down, but it just feels like this gateway count is coming down a little bit later from Fisheye than he might have wanted. And Zamu... As long as, yeah, he keeps up on the upgrades and keeps up really on everything that he currently is doing right now, he, sh he should be fine. Does need Overlord Speed, does need a significant amount of Hydralisks. And it's just kind of having that balance of producing the units and getting the drones up. Natural Expansion again, Fisheye finding nothing. And this is 3 gas Zerg, although the third gas has not yet been taken at the 9 o'clock location. A lot of Zerglings wandering out. I think once these Zerglings die, it's kind of like the Canary in the Mines as well. Corsair is trying to push in to that... Overlord, take it out. I'm actually, they're going to be able to... Yeah, they are able to... Is there another Overlord morphing? There's no additional Overlord morphing. So that Dark Templar are going to be able to get all sorts of drone kills. Another Overlord making its way across. But that's not before five kills have happened and a lot of mining disruption. So nice little bit of harassment, plus additional Corsair harassment at the main. So Fisheye forcing Zamu to try to multitask, and he's sitting still at 31 drones compared to 52 workers from Fisheye. So Fisheye's macro now kicking in. Hydralis moving for a semblance of a container, the natural expansion. Level 1 weapons is already there. Uh, Systorm's going to be finished momentarily, and there's going to pl be plenty of High Templar to obliterate that, honestly. And the Corsairs are still wandering free, looking for overlords to kill. So Zamu very much in the dark. His economy, not all that strong. Psystorm just about finished, and this is great timing for him. 
as the Hydrals are diving in. Let's see if he lands some good... I'm looking for the Psy Storms. They're, ooh, catching one of his own High Templar as it's popping out. That's gas he didn't want to lose. Might end up losing this Gateway, but not a lot else. These Hydralisks now feeling a little bit less brave as far as wanting to dive into that natural expansion. The Corsairs remaining a little bit less active in the midst of this, which is... So now they're starting to move back in. It looks like, oof, not being microed all that well, though. Trying to kill Overlords as best they can, but getting wiped out. Which is going to put Fisheye somewhat in the dark. And honestly, a supply I don't think he really wanted to throw away. A lot of units making their way across, but the Hydralisks... I think while the Corsair is being distraction, the Hydralisks... Able to take out a lot of Zealots and those High Templar. But now additional, looks like an, an additional grouping from Fisheye able to move across. He wants to go ahead and take his third. Hydral's barely there to provide some defense. I think the Hydral's there just to be kind of annoying. Again, Ventral Sacks being upgraded for Zamo. So he wants to go for a drop to follow this up. Another grouping of Hydral's moving up. But honestly, it just seems like too little to engage this attack force. Does have level one uh, range weapon, so about equivalent. Oof, that Ursadon really favoring Fisheye, blockading those in. Fisheye again, supply capping himself, but fortunately for him, Zamu supply capping himself on the opposite corner as well at 76 supply, significantly underneath. So Zamu basically just out macroing, or sorry, Fisheye just out macroing Zamu here. Sidestorm from behind. Some of these High Templar being caught out of position, and this is just. Too small an attack force, honestly. Fisheye needs more reinforcements or needs to make this attack force more cohesive to really push this in. And is losing a lot of units, honestly, as he kind of pushes forward. It looks like, yeah, and a lot of high temper critically. That's a lot of gas. So a lot of Hydralist dancing. Is still able to get, still able to get that natural expansion. But I think Zamu is going to be able to clean this up with the SimCity and just pure unit production. This is keeping... Keep in mind, he just still does have just more units pouring in. More units marching their way across. Fisheye still diving into this at the natural expansion with everything he has. Reinforcements coming from the 9 o'clock base are going to be able to clear out these, these Dragoons. So they're still not able to get on any tech. And it looks like they're getting wiped out otherwise. But still, regardless, despite all this, Lurker's... Moving in. Zamu falling behind in the overall supply count. Just feels like never ending streams of zealots moving their way across. But Zamu finally getting a grouping of units. Third base is up for Fisheye. But Fisheye just expended a lot of resources for honestly not a lot out of it overall. He's got his own shuttle. And keep in mind Ventral Sacks is still, uh, still there. And Lurkers are being upgraded. So we could see a drop. Looks like Fisheye feeling like he's economically behind, even though he's about 30 supply ahead. 40 supply ahead now. Going for a drop. Three gas Zerg is scary, I will say. I don't know that he would be able to have an indicator. He does see an Overlord meandering his way. Does he realize that is... Is he moving units? It doesn't look like he's moving units to engage that, though. I don't think he realizes that's a drop. Both players actually getting caught a little bit. He's like, okay, I don't think he realized it. So he's going to be able to move that Overlord into the main. A little bit of an engagement across the third. Some lurkers getting in position right there. The over the lurker is going to be able to drop, but there is a cannon right there. Still might be able to drop over the gateway line. Some nice side storms from Fisheye across the third. Unfortunately, just a zealot army engaging right there. The overlord, is it going to be able to get those lurkers out of there? Okay, the lurker's now dropping. It looks like Fisheye, realizing what was happening, is able to get some units out of the way. That overlord's going to be taken out. But not before the, both lurkers are down and just being annoying there. Some Zelts taking some free damage. Now a drop and six kills from that High Templar at the natural expansion. Some Zelts being dropped off on the mine, in the main. Both players just being very, very aggressive and dropping everywhere. It looks like that lurker finally being taken out near the main. Still one remaining. <laughs> lurker egg. I like that. Morphing a lurker egg on the weak Hydralisk to uh, do a little bit of micro right there. But... Not a lot out not a lot happening here. It looks like he was able to pull out the drones from his natural or from his main to his natural expansion to get that back up and mining. So a bit of a bit of harassment from both players. Zamu has been able to get his third base up in the interim. I think that shuttle was taken out. Looks like that zealot is the only thing left. It's attacking the spawning pool. Not I don't expect that he's gonna be able to get that spawning pool kill. But maybe with a follow-up drop, might be able to get some additional damage. So both players just being very, very aggressive. But I feel like Fisheye is going to end up winning this game just because he's just stayed on top of his macro. He's still at 141 supply. His main is looking a little bit thin. 
but he does have an army to go ahead and take an additional base. Zamu, on the other hand, while he's got these bases established, it feels like, yeah, the drone saturation hasn't been all that fantastic. It feels like he's oversaturated that natural expansion currently. And as a result, is just sitting at 88 supply versus 143. Keep in mind, this is... The other problem for Fisheye is just unit composition. He's been diving a lot of these zealots right on top of that lurker line. Lurker's now burrowing. Is he going to be able to pick off those observers overhead? It looks like the observers didn't have the overlord. Or sorry, the uh, the Scourge didn't have the overlord. Some good side storms from Fisheye from the low ground as well over those lurker lines. Now starting to move up. He does have level 2 armor, but he's going up against level 2 weapons. Some additional side storms able to clear things out. And it looks like the observer is not getting picked off. Just naked dragoons, though. We'll see if some zerglings are going to be able to flood and clear this up. More reinforcements making their way across. But it, I don't... Yeah, what's weird is, is I'm like, where is the army? I, I see 135 supply. Granted, 60 of that is in the worker count. But at 134, you'd, you'd feel like this is a larger army. And it just feels like Fisheye's having trouble coordinating the army together to be one cohesive ball to engage and, and utilize his superior macro, basically. Three o'clock base warping in for him. He does have map control currently. Kind of angling around. Hydralisks poking at the rest of this, and comparatively, Zamu's done a pretty good job of having lurkers and hydralisks in a cohesive position to engage this. Unit streaming in to the nine o'clock, again, kind of piecemeal and in a straight line, but going to be able to wind their way around. Drones fleeing, but there is a zealot to go ahead and attack them across that ramp. No size storm to clean that up. Actually, it looks like all of this is going to be taken out. More units flooding their way across to try to defend this. Are they going to be able to pick off any hatcheries before reinforcements arrive, though? That's a lot of gray making its way across the map. Keep thinking there's going to be a drop right there with that zergling moving back and forth. High ground covered right there. Lurker is able to get up. Uh, it doesn't look like Fisheye is doing any sort of co concentrated fire at any location currently. Some nice size storms cleaning up those lurkers to the north. But, and a good amount of size storm coating those Hydralisks. That's going to keep those Dragoons alive a little bit longer. But as the reinforcements make their way back in, I think this is going to be cleaned up before any of these hatcheries are in fact taken out. It's just kind of a matter of time. And once again, yeah, just Fisheye staying on top of the macro. But that army is a bit scattered and back at his main rather than in one cohesive grouping where it's getting something accomplished. So a big attack at the 9 o'clock. But... Wasn't really able to kill any drones, wasn't able to take out any hatcheries, and just ended up losing a lot of hydralisks and other units, effectively. So I almost feel like, yeah, okay, Zamu, he's been underneath in the macro supply count, however, and has had some mining disrupted here and there. But the trades have been overall in Zamu's favor just because of how Fisheye has been engaging a lot of this, mostly having his army come in piecemeal. However, Fisheye still has map control. Is still able to kind of cycle around. It looks like he's going to go ahead and try to establish this 12 o'clock base. He has that 3 o'clock base up and running. His main is mined out. Natural expansion's mined out. Does have that mineral only running. Comparatively, he's 2 base versus 4 base Zerg. Natural expansion looking a little bit thin. Main still actually looks like it has plenty of minerals. Is Amu going to be able to get his cohesive unit count where he can go ahead and take an additional base? Has a single Zergling scouting that bottom right. It looks like that's going to be able to see some Zealots. And additional stuff being mined up. It looks like Fisheye realizing, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and play this kind of a slow macro starvation game. Dropship at the natural expansion. Getting a beautiful size Storm. Getting four kills with that. Doesn't have enough for a second size Storm, unfortunately. And moving up, ex again, expending some units on, honestly, it looks like a little bit of a doomed attack across that... Th 3 o'clock. Some Scourge wandering up are able to take out that shuttle that's going to leave that High Templar abandoned. And that Zealot on the high ground abandoned as well. Fisheye regrouping. He, yeah, he's got... It's weird. He's got twice the supply of Zamu, but when you look at the army on the field and the engagement points, it just does not feel like it, just because of how the army is kind of scattered. Um, it looks like a lot of these probes not, in fact, mining. Bottom right-hand corner should be established momentarily. I'm still going to give the edge overall to Fisheye, just because raw unit count uh, still there. And he is doing a pretty good job of staying on top of the upgrades. Looking for an X factor of maybe a Doom Drop from Zamu comparatively. And we do see some Overlords and Zerglings and whatever not uh, being loaded up to go ahead and, and do a drop someplace. Zealot. That was Wayward actually getting a kill at the main. 
And while that's happening, Fisheye is gathering up to go ahead and again dive on that 9 o'clock location. So if he can... Wow, and this has still not been engaged. So that's three kills on that Zealot. So he's... Sorry, he's going to push up into the mineral only. This looks like a nice cohesive attack. Not a lot to defend it. Should be able to wipe this hatchery out. And that will be a big win. 12 o'clock base is up. But a lot of drones getting wiped out. And that's going to be GG from Zamu. Fisheye just having too large an army. And Zamu... Despite kind of being in a passive macro position, not able to get a large enough cohesive unit count to fight off what Fisheye was dishing out. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Fisheye advances to the final match where he will take on Jess, and I will drop into those games for Twitch momentarily. And we'll see how it goes. I don't know. PvP, or actually, sorry, ZVP, because Jess switches to Zerg in those Protoss matches, so more ZVP action. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.